Look, I think the, uh, the biggest issue is that this is not business as usual. So, so there needs to be changes in terms of mindset, look in terms of thinking, look in terms of processes, and, and, and people on the ground. So that's going to be really a challenge to address, definitely. Hi, I'm Danielle Murray from the City of Austin's Municipal Electricity Utility, Austin Energy, and I manage our solar programs. Hi there, Danielle. Look, I'm Lishen Mudliar. I'm from the city of Durban in South Africa. I'm currently spending my time uh, doing electricity pricing and focusing on renewable energy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So Austin Energy is owned by the city. It's um, a really a municipal department. So we are responsive to our local government. We report to city council. Um, we serve a few territories, a few cities around Austin, or portions of those, but primarily we're serving the city itself, and so um, we're really responsive ultimately to the voters. So are, there, are your citizens interested in renewable energy, and how do they get it? You know, to answer that question, I think uh, it's to come to come from a very different perspective and angle, and South Africa is quite unique at this stage, because we're now coming out, or we're recovering from an energy constraint. Um, and what's actually happening is that the demand for electricity within the country is approaching the supply limit. Mm -hmm. And we have what we call a rotational load shedding. And that's really placing lots of inconvenience onto customers. So customers are looking for alternate forms of energy. One, to move away from the inconvenience that, that they would not have electricity for a certain time in the day. And the other issue around it is that the cost of, renew of renewable energy has dropped drastically over the last couple of years. And so, so renewable energy is now becoming a natural competitor to the distribution grid. And so customers are now finding it cheaper to put up PV systems onto their own roofs and, and, and to use their own electricity that they generate from the sun than to actually support the local utilities. So you hear that argument from a lot of utilities that how are we going to recover our costs and if, um, if people are actually defecting from the grid like they are perhaps in South Africa um, and that more Americans may be able to do now with home energy storage such as from Tesla, who is then going to bear the cost, and is that going to fall disproportionately, disproportionately on low-income residents? No, agreed. Look, the other thing that's, that's most probably unique to, to the South African environment is that there's, there's lots of cross-subsidies built into the electricity tariffs. Mm -hmm. And uh, those cross-subsidies are now coming out from the fact that we sell electricity p per kilowatt hour. So the less kilowatt hours that we push through the grid, the less cross subsidies we actually have. And so it's actually like a debt spiral that's, that's, that's waiting to happen. We have tiers for our electricity pricing. Most of our charges are volumetric like you have, I think, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So um, the more energy you use, the more you actually pay, which is in part to, to promote conservation. Sure. Um, but the problem is then if you are a large home and a large consumer, you get paid more for your energy. And if you're a smaller, efficient home, you get paid less for your solar energy, essentially through net metering. So we looked at our rates and started thinking about, well, what is the value of solar to the utility? We're providing incentives to these customers to go solar. What are we getting back? And so we've actually moved away from net metering into a value of solar tariff structure so that our customers actually get credited for their generation at a set value of solar that's determined each year and approved by council. Um, and it's separate from their actual rates. So they still pay their normal residential rates for everything that they consume in their home, whether it's from the grid or from the system on the roof. And then they get credited for every kilowatt hour that they produce. And it's at this set value of solar rate that every customer gets, regardless of how much energy they use on site. So it's really improved the equity between solar customers sure. and then between solar and non-solar customers. The reality is, and I think within the South African context, is that we're actually trying to provide basic services to a large number of the people within the population. Mm -hmm. And we have most probably, look, I would say half a million families living within the city of Durban that's, um, that's living in sort of informal dwellings, we call them. And they still in need of basic services, water, housing, sanitation, and electricity. Mm -hmm. Uh, so at this stage, I mean, so, so if you approach that, that, that customer segment, uh, there's a requirement for basic services rather than having a specific type of service. So whether it's renewable or non-renewable, it's not really the issue at this stage. They would appreciate just having the service delivered to their door. So is the current um, energy source mostly coal? Very correct. Look, almost 95% of our generation mix is, is coal-fired electricity. So you could argue then if, if you move to a greater renewable supply for, for your entire region, you would be improving air quality, and particularly air quality for, well, for everybody, including those folks in the informal settlements. 
that's for sure, but it does come at a price. Sure. Look, I think the reality for us is that we never really saw this coming that quickly. Mm. Um, and, and when we take a step back to now assess the situation when it comes to renewable energy, we could basically break it up into three, three components that, that we are concerned on. And the one you touched on is the technical aspects. The network that we have in place was never designed to take electricity in the reverse mm -hmm. direction. And the administrative function of the municipality, look, as well as the laws and everything else that we have in place and the bylaws, um, talk about buying electricity from, from ESCOM in our case, through our network down to the end customers. So the electricity flow is in that direction. Now we're getting electricity flowing in the reverse direction, and so you could imagine there's a whole host of issues from a technical point of view. We can then go on looking at, at the commercial aspects, and, and we did touch on the issues around tariffs. Um, once again, the tariffs have been designed in a particular fashion, taking electricity in one direction only. Mm -hmm. Now with the bi-directional flow of electricity, there's a whole host of issues that we need to consider with the tariffs. And one particular area of concern is, is the mechanisms of cross-subsidy. Mm -hmm. I think the final, um, the final issue that we need to attend to within our country and within the city is the issue around the regulation. Um, the generation, the transmission and the distribution of electricity within the country is very highly regulated. And now we have these pockets of customers that are starting to buy uh, these, 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 these prepackaged PV systems off the shelf and now, now connecting it onto their grids. Mm -hmm. um, so is it legal to do that? And, and what is the regulatory framework behind this to ensure that they can now synchronize to the grid. So there's, there's quite a few areas where we need to actually work on quite quickly mm -hmm. to ensure that we can safely synchronize those people to the grid. Yeah. It was great meeting you and thanks for coming to Canada to discuss tariffs over in South Africa. Oh, great. Look, it was a pleasure meeting you and I hope we touch base again soon sometimes. Nice to meet you. Thank you. you.